And our guest host, so I'm very pleased to say, is joining us in the studio this morning, Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. Mark, good morning. Nice and bright and early, isn't it, on a Monday right. morning? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Now, let's talk about Fed Chair Janet Yellen, because I guess she had a pretty tough task of sort of speaking to markets, so we're looking for a bit more clarity from her. Just take us through some of the, the key takeaways, I guess, for you from those comments. Yeah, I mean, the, the bulk of her comments were, as expected, on monetary policy framework, you know, past, present and future. So there wasn't actually a lot of interest in there for the markets. Um, you know, it's probably more for the, the nerds amongst us in terms of the, some of the strategies that they may employ if necessary going down the line if we do head towards a, another financial crisis. In terms of those market comments, she, she pretty much stuck to the script that has been consistent. You know, she said that the, the US economy is slowly recovering. Um, we've seen modest improvement in consumer spending. And that has led to further strengthening of the, the labour market, which we've consistently seen mm -hmm. her talk about. She said, look, there, there are um, weaknesses. Um, you know, business investment remains subdued, as does exports. And they're worried about the currency as well. Um, there wasn't really any kind of indication in terms of, you know, September, is it live? Any further clarity down that path? But what she did say, she said, look, recent data has strengthened the case for um, a rise in rates. And that probably initially spooked the markets, but then uh, after that, they kind of seemed to calm down. And there wasn't really a lot of reaction af at that statement time around about 10 o'clock uh, New York time, midnight um, Friday our time. And it was only when Stanley Fisher did his mm -hmm. interview on CNBC um, that uh, he, tried, he put his interpretation on Yellen's remarks. So we did see a, a big, uh, bigger reaction in, in terms of the markets. Uh, and he was asked the question of whether the market should be on the edge of their seats with regards to a September hike and maybe another hike further uh, down the line in 2016. In response to that, uh, not only did he say yes to both of those, that he thought that was likely, but he also said that Yellen's um, statement was consistent with those comments as well. And that's what kind of really spooked the market. And you saw um, the US dollar rally, uh, you saw treasuries sell off, you saw equity sell off, which is what you talked about. So it actually wasn't Yellen's statement that caused the market to get nervous. It was actually Stanley Fisher, the Fed's vice chair's interpretation of her comments, which is kind of a slightly strange. And that was an hour and a half basically after she'd, uh, she'd started her speech. That was what had really kind of moved the markets on Friday in the direction that we've seen. That's so interesting, isn't it? Just if we have a look at some of those remarks, in fact, he was actually also talking about uh, the election. Stanley Fisher, as, as uh, Mark mentioned there in a television interview, saying that we're reasonably close to full employment and inflation rate has been growing. A rate hike this year is possible, as, as you've been you know, discussing there. He also we're waiting on the upcoming election, saying that it, it could affect things in the economy as well. Um, yeah, his comments on the election were that whilst it does cause uncertainty, uh, he, was, he was very clear that the Fed is apolitical. Uh, and then he was pushed saying, well, you know, would, would, the, would the Fed hike um, you know, to kind of prove that it was apolitical? And you know, he said, look, you know, everything is still data dependent. Um, you know, so they, and Yellen was also stressed that as she has consistently stressed over the last several years. Um, and in terms of the election, you know, I think it's another cause of uncertainty. And it wasn't the election per se that would cause them to either hike or not hike. It was um, that, that feedback of uncertainty into the economic data that came out as to whether they would um, be able to hike or not, given if there was the election, if it was um, more close in terms of Trump getting more support and then became more uncertainty, then maybe they would hold off uh, hiking. Mm, I mean, it, it seems like the Fed up until now has sort of found any excuse not to increase rates. Brexit, of course, was one of them. And that's in didn't seem to stop the world from spinning. Do you think that the election would stop them from raising rates prior to November? Oh, I, I think so. In, in to, if, if it did come through in the data, if you did see a pullback maybe in consumer spending and uh, you still see that weakness in business investment, if that continued and part of that reason was the election because it was becoming uh, close in terms of who was going to win that and I think uh, the, the market outcome if Trump was to be elected would be a pretty negative reaction. Uh, but if, it, if, if that into that uh, election period, we do see those polls tighten and become a, a much closer race, and then potentially you might see the Fed holding off. But again, I think you're going to get to September. I mean, as we've talked about before, the, the non-farm payrolls on Friday, you know, Fisher said that's a key data point, and we're currently looking for around about 180,000 in terms of those non-farm payroll figures. 
you know, if if that was below, then that would be a, pro a possible excuse for them not to hike. Um, if it was a stellar number, then that was obviously reinforced. But as you say, you know, time and time again, the Fed has positioned the market for a potential hike. It's kind of got there and hasn't pulled that rate hike trigger. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the right way to position the market, as, as I've said before on the program, because if you if you position the market not expecting a hike and then you do hike, then you would cause all kinds Shock of panic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. they've, they've played it exactly right in terms of how they're trying to position the market. And each time they've got there, they just don't feel the economy uh, has been strong enough. Having said that, this time there's been a lot more of the regional Fed presidents that have been a bit more vocal in terms of saying, look, now is the time to see that gradual increase. And you know, you've seen economists out of Barclays saying probably it's September or never in terms of whether they hike again. And you know, if you kind of think about last year, you know, maybe they should have hiked in June. It was probably better conditions than September. And then they got to December and basically had to do something. Mm. Um, so maybe September will will be the uh, the key point for them in, in the uh, in this year. Well, let's actually take a look and see how the market has shifted their, their pricing for a September move. Trade is actually seeing now a 42% chance of a hike in September. Uh, we're edging ever closer to that 50% mark versus 32% before the speech. And then if we look out to December, traders now seeing a 60% chance of a hike in December versus 52% before the speech. So we did certainly see the market moving off the back of those comments, those upbeat comments. But I guess most officials in the end really need or want to see this improvement in overall GDP growth. And obviously they still need to see that, that improvement in inflation. So in light of that, do you think that uh, a December move at this point looks more likely? I mean, what, yeah, what's your I, I think, expectation? Yeah, I, I think so. And in terms of the GDP data that you saw on Friday, that was revised down slightly to 1.1 from 1.2, in line with expectations. Uh, the revised consumer confidence um, survey was revised down, and that was actually slightly weaker than expectations. So again, you know, there's still that mix of data, uh, and it's always easy to argue both sides with the data by choosing which ones um, you pick. But I think, you know, generally over the last few weeks, we have seen a bit of strengthening in terms of the data. And that obviously increases the chance of a hike in September and by December. I'm still thinking that it's probably 2017 okay. before we, we get that hike, um, probably March. Um, but equally, you know, you, you, it depends on the data. Uh, yep. yeah, kind of caveating, as uh, Janet Yellen has done time and time again, in terms of when they will actually um, pull that trigger. Um, you know, I just think that they'll... They, they, are going to be very, very cognizant in terms of the strength of the US dollar. And if they do hike in September, then maybe the, the kind of currency traders will start to think, well, maybe December's live as well, as Stanley Fisher has said, and you'll start to see a, a fairly severe appreciation in the US dollar. Obviously, on the flip side, a weakness in the, in the Aussie, which probably helps the RBA out. But in terms of the Fed's thinking, I think you'll get to September. I don't think the, the economic data will be sufficiently strong and positive that they will be um, definite that they should move and I think they'll probably delay that until December at the earliest. What about if they do delay until next year? What sort of, what's that going to do to their credibility? Surely it's going to put a dent in it further. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people that are talking about their credibility as being short, you know, in terms of if you think about back at the start of the year where they had the dot plots where they're expecting mm -hmm. uh, four interest rate hikes and, you know, we've got to, you know, September and there hasn't been one yet. So, but again, you know, they've always said it's data dependent. And you can't just, and, and again, Yellen did stress in her speech that the, the course is not preset of interest rate hikes. It will be gradual. Um, and, you know, I think that they've done a pretty good job in terms of how they've positioned that market for potential hikes. And it's better to position the market that way than, than sure. the reverse. Yeah. Um, and, t and in terms of their credibility, I think they've just responded to the data, which hasn't been there um, sufficiently strong um, for them to, to look for that hike. So I think they've done a pretty good job in terms of um, the market. And you know, people will always criticize them and say, yes, they've lost confidence in the markets. And, and that is a key, especially in these unprecedented times from more glo the, the global central banks more, more broadly in terms of their credibility with investors that they can control the situation and try and stimulate some kind of growth. Because once investors start to lose faith, as we saw a few times with the ECB, then the markets do get very nervous and very mm -hmm. volatile. Now, one of the other parts of the speech I just want to quickly ask you about before we go to a break there, but the topic was around designing resilient monetary policy frameworks for the future. So, not surprisingly, it was about the longer term issues, I guess, and the framework surrounding monetary yeah. policy. Last week, we saw a paper being released by San Francisco Fed President John Williams, I think, and that was around in increasing the inflation target. I think she also touched on that in her speech. She was saying that they weren't considering a move at this stage, but it is clear it is an area that, that does require further 
of research. That's right. So she mentioned the 2% the, the inflation target and whether that needed to be raised. Mm. Um, she also mentioned, well, maybe the, the Fed should become, you know, uh, actually target a, a specific price level or specific nominal GDP level. And as you rightly say, um, she did go and say, look, none of these are actively being considered at the moment, but in terms of down the line, you know, there will be more research done on those. And again, you know, because we, uh, you know, the, the globe and the global economy is, is, is changing, you know, maybe the old measures of, of inflation and of GDP are becoming less relevant in today's society, especially with a lot of the, um, you know, kind of the, the technology um, that's, that's, that's coming through into the, into the uh, economy and whether that is actually capturing, you know, normal GDP growth in terms of the manufacturing and the service sector, um, you know, in terms of the, the, the price index as well, is, is, that, is that the, is that the best measure of inflation? Uh, is it capturing all the different nuances in terms of the internet? Um, and there's, there's been a lot of paper, papers written on, on those topics. Um, and you know, in terms of going forward, I think you know, the Fed seemed to be pretty happy and comfortable that she had the, the toolkit to uh, withstand a, a fairly severe recession. And she still said, look, monetary policy, i.e. interest rates, is still going to be the key driver for the Fed's monetary policy going forward. Uh, it did keep the door open for maybe further asset purchases, if necessary, um, you know, very similar to what has happened previously. Um, so it's, you know, and that was the bulk of the, the speech, which sure. was pretty, pretty tedious mm. for, for probably the, uh, the non-interest rate global uh, economic watchers. But it was pretty interesting in terms of you know, the paths, different paths that the Fed has kind of examined for how to um, manage the economy going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, given in light of you know, the whole world at the moment, the efficacy, I guess, the monetary policy, very interesting comments, I suppose. Sure. Now, um, job started this Friday is going to be exceptionally crucial. We'll be talking a little bit more about that throughout the program. Do stay with us, though. Coming up, Fed Chair Janet Yellen wasn't the only highlight there at Jackson Hole Bank of Japan. Governor Kuroda saying that he won't hesitate to boost monetary policy. We'll have all of those details coming up.